F1 cars over the years have come in all shapes and sizes. However, there was one car that has been etched into the history books. The Brabham BT46B, aka the fan car. Now, for people who may not have seen this car before, you may start thinking that the fan part is actually where a fan has sent in a design to Brabham and they've created the car based off that. Well, you'd be entirely wrong. They literally just stuck a massive fan on the back and it created unbelievable results. The fan car was born out of necessity as Lotus had created what was called ground effect which sucked the car to the track allowing more grip and higher cornering speeds. I can imagine it now, the Brabham team all down the local pub kicking themselves that Lotus have created a car that has much more downforce than any other team. After a packet of crisps and a local beverage, the following conversation occurs. This conversation is by no means factual and could possibly be the furthest thing from the truth. Lotus have created the ground effect. We're why don't you, and this might be being silly, Gordon, stick a bloody great big fan on the back and say it's there for cooling and not performance. <laughs> That'd be great. By all that's holy, that could actually work. The 1978 Swedish Grand Prix was the moment of truth. When it was unveiled on the Thursday, F1 teams were absolutely dumbfounded as to what Brabham had produced. It was essentially the Batmobile and a bloody spaceship combined. Could such an innovation work at its first Grand Prix? Well, John Watson and Nicky Lauda qualified second and third respectively. Not a bad achievement against the dominant Lotus 79, you may think. How about we add into the mix that both drivers, wait for it, qualified with full tanks of fuel. And Nicky Lauda was also quoted in saying he was doing his best to avoid pole. That's how overpowered the fan car was. You must be sitting there enjoying this video, thinking what incredible innovation. They must have had heaps of money for all kinds of amazing technology. At race weekends, they covered the fan with a dustbin lid. Yep, you heard me. Turns out dustbin day in Sweden is on a Wednesday. This piece of information may or may not be entirely fictional. And so Brabham could cover their secrets with the top of a grey bin. Will we see the dustbin return for 2018 to cover new parts for F1 teams? Let us know in the comments section below. Fortunately for Lauda and Watson, the team remembered to remove said contraption from the fan and they were good to go for the race. Although all of their competitors were channeling their inner Roman Grosjean and constantly complaining about having a face full of dust, rubbish and even rocks. Mario Andretti could clearly see that Brabham had produced an unbelievable car through a loophole in the rulebook and was trying to get the car banned from the sport. But no, Nicky Lauda's 34 second victory over Riccardo Patrese Stood. Many people believe that the car was in fact banned after the Swedish Grand Prix, but in fact it was voluntarily withdrawn by a man you may have heard of, Bernie Ecclestone. Bernie was the team owner of Brabham at the time, and to avoid conflict with the other privately owned teams whose support he needed, he decided to retire the car after only one race. In the words of Gordon Murray, he was very, very pissed off. A Drivers' and Constructors' World Championship down the toilet for the benefit of Bernie Eccleston's business connections. Is there a weirder F1 car that you can think of? Let us know in the comments section below.